All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Up and In Show. We are at Cards and Culture on the Purple Couch. I'm with my guy, Jared Mitchell. Let's do it. Thank you very much, dude. It's What's good to up, be man? back with you, bro. Man, it's been, been a while. A it's been a minute. I haven't been on this couch in a minute. I know. <laughs> man, we started this thing a long time ago, Up and In Show. So if you guys are listening, long-time listeners, thank you, first and foremost. Uh, but Jared started with us with the Up and In Show and uh, now is a co-host on the Miked Up Show with Mikey Matuk. So all LSU baseball love and... I'm excited to do this. We're chopping it up about LSU baseball. It's yeah. postseason time, baby. Yeah, it's that time. Uh, it's about time for them to kind of jump over that hurdle and get to kind of where we really were able to get. And it's, it's, we, I'm, I've been ready to kind of pass that torch anyway, dude. Like I was thinking that. I, I think people kind of like think it's the other way around, but no. I got, nah, Doug. Like I want to see him continue to succeed with it. So like, 100%. I'm, we're, I'm, I've been waiting just as long to be like, hey, bro, like here you are, you did it. And it's time. I think they have a chance to do it this yeah. year. I'm going to be honest with you, too. Like, I think it helps LSU's legacy, too. To, like, right. And even us, like, if people were like, oh, you you, you want to be the last championship yeah. team? I'm like, no, I want more championships for our legacy, right? Yeah. Like, it makes our program better. It makes yeah. us more proud. It makes us continue, like, the, passing the torch. So, I'm like, no, we need to win a championship. It's been 15 years. The last I remember, all the, the past champions, if you will, like, the way I think of it is, is people don't, like, forget championship teams. So, we may be in the last championship team, but I still remember all those other teams before. So oh, for yeah. me, it's like, if that's how you think I'm thinking that we want to be the last champions, we won't be forgotten. No, no matter. Hell like, no. Just keep the legacy going. I would like to see him keep winning and keep winning and keep winning. Exactly. I think it'll be great for Jay too. You know, I just, I, I really like Jay. I know there's, you know, different opinions of people and stuff like that, but um, I've enjoyed my company and my time with Jay. So I, I hope he gets a championship. That would be cool for him too. I think they have a good coaching staff, so. They got they got all the pieces. That's they for got sure. All the pieces, definitely. Um, yeah. Hey, if you guys didn't know too, this guy over here was the most outstanding player in the College World Series tournament. So that was kind of fun. Yeah, apparently you did right. that happened. So you did all right. It was a decent tournament, yeah, if I remember. Right. You were on that ESPN three commercial for a while too. That was <laughs> that, that was like my for favorite. A long time, <laughs> bro. I think they still. I, I'm being dead serious. I think I saw it the other day. I'm like that. If that only was, NIO was a thing back then. <laughs> Can you imagine how much? That's crazy. That is crazy. It, is it was crazy. perfect because you were number three, right? Yeah, you got yeah, up yeah. and it was like they it was like the ESPN three of whatever yeah. that was at the time of streaming yeah. and stuff. That did run for a while. Yeah. It was a good while. But, but people in Pro Bowl used to always talk to me about that. They oh thought like God. they were like, bro, that was the most badass thing. Because you got up and didn't you like yell or something? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. yeah it was after like, I think I slid in the third, if I remember correctly. Yeah. I don't remember if it was for I think it was from the back because I remember seeing the number. Yeah. So but yeah. Your celebration was like what everybody, all my teammates, they were like, yo, what's Jay Mitchell like? What's Jerry Mitchell like, bro? Like that celebrate, because they, you know, they yeah. see, they don't know anything yeah, from the yeah. year. They just turn on the TV in the postseason. They see you, and they're hyping you and chat up with the, you know, the, the national championship with football and everything. Yeah. And then you do that. Everybody's like, bro, you're the best player ever. Like, <laughs> hey, how about this? For, talk, I know you got the same. There's no way you didn't get the same thing. When you first got the pro ball, how many people were like, Damn, man, you big, but I thought you were like 6'12". <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah, everybody's like, dude, I thought you were like 6'5". Like, That's what, what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Everybody was like, bro, what is he, like 6'5"? Like, like he got to be like – and I'm like, I'm like, I mean, he's big. Don't get me wrong. He's 6'5". Yeah, but like, yeah. <laughs> they just like assume all this, hey, right? The TV yeah. really adds some, uh, some really weight does. to you. Whatever, it does. So, yeah. It is what it is. But I think it was that commercial, too. Oh, they true. made it. They, they did good. They did kind of. It was good. Yeah, it was good. It was good. It ran for a while. But good. you played well, too. That was good. We did. Yeah. We did. When you think about it, when you go back on it, we, we had a really good team. That when you year. sent me the stats the other day, I was like, holy shit. I like looking at stats. First off, so let's talk about, let's talk about this. And you can tell me which, which side of it you were on because especially as I got like later in my career, I it wasn't even like a, I'm hiding anything. I just, I became like, all right, bro, I'm okay with this because I'm going to stop acting like I don't know. But <laughs> Later on in my career, I started being like, man, let me see these numbers because I kind of want to understand them and know, whereas I feel like a lot of people, a lot of baseball players will sit there and try to tell you, yeah, dude, like I never look at the numbers. I don't know what my numbers are and this and that. I'm like, bro, there's a fucking camera in left center field and right center field. There's a scoreboard. In <laughs> there's every, a ticker going there's across a ticker with it. It's on the wall. It's in every stadium you play in. Don't act like you don't see it. Yeah. You know, and so like it's funny to me because a lot of guys still act like they don't know their numbers and they just play and I'm just like. I'm not stupid, dude. I've done this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I know how it goes. Yeah, it's, it's funny to me, like thinking about it. But like when you talk about the numbers, like I go back and kind of look at it, and man, they had we had dudes that had sneaky good seasons that you don't even realize. And obviously, you know, like Chad was a huge thing. Yeah. Like, but even remember when I was like Bradshaw, almost like under three ERA. 
like, shoot and like 50 a something innings over three over yeah. three era 50 something innings is a good chunk of innings out of the pen multiple random starts random here and starts there here and there like that the whole like saying for a long time is you need three and a half pitchers right yeah, to be yeah. really good and i you know however that comes whether it comes in three starters whether it comes in two and a half starters in a closer however it goes i really do think when it comes to college baseball like you got a legit chance if you have quote unquote three and a half pitchers right and we look back at that year, and there's no slight to Austin Ross, especially because that guy ended up having a great career. Mm-hmm. I think if it wasn't for like arm, like arm troubles, like he would have been a big leaguer. Hundred percent, yeah. right? But I think he translated more to the pro ball game than he did to college because yep. he was a like legit pitch to contact guy. Yep. Well, when we were talking about aluminum bats and you know hotter balls, like that's kind of that's gonna be tough, right? Because yeah. you don't really have to hit sweet spots of bats in college. For right. So if you want to call him the half pitcher at that time. That's only because the guy literally was a strike. Right. Like he got on the mound and it was a strike. And he kept us in the game on and a Sunday too. he kept us too, in the game right? on a With Sunday where offense. we had a good yeah. enough team to just outbang you, yeah. right? But like that year, it was shut down, shut down. He's going to keep us in the game. Yep. And then Maddie was literally door closed at the end exactly. of it. Exactly. So the that goes yeah. your three and a half. But then now when you go back and look at the numbers, you're like, well, damn, Bradshaw almost had a three. Yeah. Well, damn, Nolan Kane had like a four, two. Yeah. You're like, a lot of innings, And too. you're like, yeah, and you're like looking at it, you're like, shit, the rest of our pitching staff was better than you thought, it was like, than what you thought it was yeah. at that time, right? We were and nice. when I look at them now and I'm looking at this team now, I'm like, man, if we can get some of those, like, young kids at the back end of that pen and stuff like that to really get going. Yeah. Bro, that's all you need, especially if Thatcher keeps throwing the way so. Yeah. yeah well, if, he, if he can start that regional and win that, yeah, 100%, because that's the key is just being able He's to. He's the wild card, dude. Yeah. He's the joker. I agree. He's I the agree. joker in the deck. Yep. If he if he shows up and plays and throws away, and you don't have to use a ton of the the key bullpen guys in that first game, if he can go six or seven, you yeah, don't have to exactly. If he can go six and seven, you can piece together yeah. at the end of the game. Hopefully, we have a decent lead, right? Yeah. Like, hopefully, it's 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 good enough to get but us. I'll through. be honest with you, though. Even if not, like, I, I, and that's what I I guess when I say I go back to three and a half, like, if you get out of Skeens, what you think you'll get out of him? If you get out of Ty Floyd, what you think you'll get out of him? If you get out of Thatcher Hurry, what you think you'll get out of him? Those other guys won't be extended. They right, won't right. have to go six to nine outs to be able to kind of like keep this thing together. Yep. I think the, the the less you can make those guys have to go extended outings, better off you are. And it's not any slight to them. Right. They're just all in positions they never thought they would be in because exactly. they had three frontline arms go down. Exactly. So with that being said, these kids are kind of thrust into something they were not ever expecting to be in. And it takes time to adjust. And I think that's where they are. 100%. And I think I said this in the beginning of the year too, right? Like things, people's roles are defined throughout the year. Yeah. Unfortunately, because of the injuries, every role kept getting redefined, yeah. you know, and like different yeah. and put in different positions. So nobody was ever the set closer. Nobody was ever really, it was Friday and Saturday and that was it, right? Yeah. There was no set Sunday guy. It was no set midweek guy. It was always trying to get people in different roles to figure out who can take this load, who yeah. can do this, right? So I think the postseason now, it's like, all right, cool. We just got to win. So people are just going to be thrown into random roles. It's like, who's going to perform? So I think they got the guys. I think they have the – to me, it's about the coaching staff too, right? Mm-hmm. Are those coaches going to get those guys believing enough, hey, you can do this job. It doesn't matter what role it is. Like, just embrace it. That to me is going to be the biggest key too. That's uh, It's crazy too because that's the one thing about college baseball is there is no – there's no minor leagues, man. Like, yeah. So there's no – Call ups. There's no send downs. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is you it. Got who this you is your got, squad. Yeah, right. So <laughs> like guys it. go down. Guys have to step up. Yep. And you're either gonna get it done or you're not. Yeah. What I think Jay has done a good job of all year, and I think somebody like Thatcher is kind of the prime example of it. If you beat that kid down all year because you haven't got out, gotten out of him what you thought you would get out of him, there's no way he's throwing like that in the SEC tournament. Yeah, no, no, no. You get like you get yeah, what I'm yeah, saying, yeah. and like there's there's places you can go, there's people you can be around who beat people down when they're not right. at their best. Yep. Jay's found a way to communicate to this group of guys to where you still see guys like Thatcher showing up at the end of the year. You still see guys like who could easily be pe- just absolutely pissed off. Guys like Joe Vera, guys like Pearson, who were very, very, very big parts of the team last year, who have been in and out, spotty, back onto it a little bit more at the end of the year. But you could have lost them early in the year yeah. by not being in the lineup every day. 100%. He's found a way to keep those guys like into it, and now they have become like really big parts of what they're doing now. And it seems, hopefully, that it's all really gelling at the right time, like legit gelling at the right time. Yeah, I said that too in the beginning of the year. <clears throat> is just like being – you could easily lose a team like that when you have that many guys fighting for spots or roles or whatever, right? So – 
I think it's going to be on leadership of the, you know, the leaders in the team, but then the coaches too, to be able to be like, yeah. keep these guys ready for whenever, yeah. whenever it is. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm excited to see how they roll out in the tournament. I, I think too, like what a, what a like sweet feeling it'll be for them to, you start the year, the unanimous one, you really go for like, what, like 10 weeks of being the unanimous one in like every poll. Yeah. And then you get knocked off and then you lose the teams that you should be. How sweet of a feeling will it be for it to all kind of come back together when a lot of people had kind of jumped off the bandwagon. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like for them to pull this thing back together and kind of get going from that spot. I think that's a pretty cool feeling right there. A hundred percent. I think good teams do that, right? They take their bruises and lumps, they figure out what makes them successful and they get back on and then they're even stronger. So I think that's going to be a big key for them. Let, at, like, let's tell the truth about it too. Like if you're one, if you're the number one team from wire to wire, where is it that you got tested? Yeah. Where is it that you had to look yourself in the mirror? Yeah. Where is it that it's like, hey, are you either, I'm either going to go, when we get to that fork in the road, I'm either going to go right or I'm going to go left. Like, where does that happen? If you're literally one all the way through and right. through, right? So to me, I was kind of hopeful it would happen at some point. Me too. And then at some point, you'd obviously still be looking and be like, oh, I don't know if they have it. They're missing this, they're missing this. And because they're not hot. Right. They're not playing great. Right. But nobody wants to be peaking before you get to this part of the year. Exactly. It's so like, they're just really that simple. Like, no. this is the time to peak. Yep. This is the time where guys who didn't have significant roles throughout the year to all of a sudden show up and be heroes in the role that they're in. Yeah. It's that time. Yep. I'm trying to think in 09 when, like, did we have, because technically with our rings, it said wire to wire, right? So we were number one throughout the year, but I know we weren't even the number well, one. Well, it wasn't seed. throughout. It was, we started the year one and then obviously Ended. finished Okay, it, yeah. okay, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, Cause I think we went in. We were definitely one. No, we went in to the tournament oh, as oh, a, oh. like a three or five seed. I think we were the three. Like I think we were the three, three yeah, overall seed. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. McGee and I were talking about this the other day. Um, we definitely weren't one. No, I know for sure yeah. we weren't one. What What do you think it was in 09 that was our setback? Because we, I mean, we checked every box. We were SEC overall champs. Yeah. Won the tournament. Oh, like <laughs> <laughs> West Baton Rouge champions. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's what I said on uh, Jordy Clyde, Clyde show. I was like, I mean, uh, Jordy uh, Holdberg show. Um, I was like, it was the LSU Invitational, baby. That's what, that's what that was. Um, and then... Won our regional, obviously super regional. We, like, yeah. What, what was it for us? I think our setback was, so you'll remember it. A lot of people don't, but apparently, I don't, and I only remember this because coaches told it to me multiple times, but apparently up until that Tennessee series or up through the Tennessee series, at home that we lost, right? We lost two series all year. Yeah. One at home. I forgot. We both won. of them at home too. Yeah. Illinois. Went at home against Illinois before conference play started. Yep. And then we lost to Tennessee with like three weeks left in the season. I forgot season, about that. Right? So, yeah. So And they were not good at this. Yeah, no, they we weren't. Not, yeah, and yeah, we yeah. absolutely drum rolled them on Friday night. Too. Yeah, yeah. So, going back to it, through that Tennessee series, we didn't turn a single, I think it was either 4 6 three, That's right. or 6 4 three double play on the entire year, which is crazy to think about. Yep. It. For anybody who's listening to it, if you go back and look at the schedule, just go ahead and see how many games that is. It's a lot. It really is. Yeah. I don't even know how. 40, I don't, probably I can't 40 even, something games. I don't I mean. even know how to. It's a lot, right? Yeah. And we were good. We were a really good team. Well, we drum rolled Tennessee that night. I think it was like 16 to 3 or something. And then we get, we proceeded. I think we, we had like four or five errors on Saturday. And then we just got beat on Sunday. Yeah. Straight up. Yep. And so we lose that series. So for me, the turning point was right there because coach made a decision or decisions to change up stuff and could have went right. I think we went right, yep. but we all could have gone left, yep. right? And the decisions were to take who is now a perennial all-star, yeah. perennial gold, gold glove guy, and who will be like, as far as for like college career and professional career, will go down as, in my eyes, probably one of the top three to five LSU players ever. Yeah. And the guy doesn't even get talked about. But <laughs> DJ LeMay, he was playing shortstop at that point. Right. He gets moved to second base, which he's never played in his life. You insert who is now a major league catcher right. who never made it to the big leagues as a shortstop, who was a freshman sitting on the bench. You insert Austin Nola off the bench onto the shortstop spot. You then take... Leon Landry, who was the eventual third rounder out mm -hmm. of the outfield, <laughs> and you put him on the bench with 12 or 13 homers on the year. Yep, that was crazy. <laughs> He's got 12 or 13 homers on the year. You place him on the bench, 
and you insert the guy that was playing second base, who was an eventual big leaguer, ended up being a National League Player of the Month. Yep. Ryan Schiff goes to left field yep. and enter Mikey Mata to center field. And yep. I moved to right field. Yep. Or I might have been in right field. I don't really remember. I think I was kind of left and I think I went yeah, to right. Yeah. So, and I go to right. And so the moves could have easily been like, we all could have easily looked at it like, yo, what is going on? Is he has he lost his mind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're still one of the best teams in the nation. Right. We lost a who cares? It was Tennessee. Right. Like we were bigger fish to fry. Yeah. Cause because you know how it was at that point. Like coach doesn't really under he doesn't really understand that that and you know it, but at about that Georgia series through the through that rest of the next year, it was like literally everybody was just kind of like we kind of don't really care what he has to say right now. <laughs> we knew, like, yeah. We knew how he was and what ticked him off and what set him off. And you finally had a group of dudes that understood when he gets like that, we just go this way. Yeah. Like, yeah. it is what it is, bro. Yeah. Like, he's going to be mad about this. What you going to do? Right. It kind of, you kind of stop looking like over your shoulder to see if he approved. Right. And you kind of was just like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, we're doing this. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. It doesn't matter. We're so at that point, like that all happened. And instead of everyone kind of going their separate ways, it just kind of brought everybody closer together, yeah. which I don't think he knew that was happening, but he felt like literally these are the moves that I need to make to make this team better. Yeah. And from that point, it was just like game over, bro. No, I, I, I think so too. I, for, I mean, I didn't forget about that because I say that all the time. I say like, <laughs> That was the the turning point in our season, but I forgot it was almost not in reaction, but in response to a Tennessee loss. I yeah. forgot about that. That was because Schimpf made some errors at second mm -hmm. base, right? Yeah. Like that cost us. Like I remember that now that you say that, and it was like, oh shit! Like, but it was also like we all. I, I felt like when I heard the news, I was like, damn, coach is like really like a little reactionary here, you know? <laughs> like, oh shit! But then I'm like thinking about it, I'm like. I think a lot of us felt that DJ was just a little off, not off. Both but, of them. Yeah. Just, there was not as much like synergy and exactly. chemistry there. Exactly. It was. Like, yep. we, oh, we kind of felt that. Yep. You know, and, and we didn't realize or know if it was because it was coming from this spot or right. this spot. It just, it wasn't meshing like it was supposed to right exactly. at the time. And then just like, I don't think it was in any of our minds that like DJ could really actually move. He was going to be a first well, rounder well, or a second rounder. And not just rounder. that too. Like, at that point in time, like when you watch baseball when you turn baseball and you saw big league yeah. baseball there was no 6'4 225 pound second base no ever so we all felt like yo what, what? <laughs> what is yeah, that yeah, yeah. like why would he go there like yep. they don't look like that no dude we that's crazy wrong. yep we were wrong. wrong yeah we were so wrong yep but do you remember though how crazy it was because i remember that monday when maneri did mm -hmm. that he grabbed because dj and i showed up at the field together we were we were boys so he grabbed me and was like and he starts walking with me down the outfield just like i just want to let you know what i'm doing today and i was like he's like i'm gonna announce it to the team in, in about an hour but you know i'm moving dj to second base how do you think he's gonna react how do you think the team's gonna react and i was like uh, uh did you talk to dj about this because that was my first thing i was like dj's gonna quit like he's he's gonna be gone like he's gonna be gone yeah he's, he's done yeah he might he might murder maneri like he might slash his tires go to his house i don't know i don't know what dj dj was a silent killer so um i don't know it was i was just like i was so shocked and i was like but then i remember right then and there i was like i'm actually on board like in my head without even like the initial shock, but yeah. then I was like, I think that's a great move. Yeah. Like in my head. I don't know. And so and Maneri was like, I think he's gonna play second base in the big leagues. And I was like, All right, that, now I know you're just trying to sell it to DJ, but oh, I, I was like, <laughs> I was like, but you're not you might not be wrong. Like I could see it. Yeah. So I don't know. It was a cool moment. And then that Tuesday, remember like they, mm -hmm. they switched or Wednesday, whatever the midweek was, and they turned like a sick double player. Mm -hmm. Austin made a nice play. And I remember being like and we all kind of like looked around and was like, like that was, we got something. Yeah, we were good. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I would I say it was that too. And the other the other part that so, like, that was the one that I think we already had a team that kind of felt like it was, like, championship or bust. Not yeah, kind of. Like, yeah, we literally yeah, did. We were yeah. like, yo, this is the same team we had last year. Yep. Why can't we win? Yeah. Right? So, we already had a team that kind of felt like it was championship or bust. But I also think, so, that happens. We finish out the year pretty strong. We go into the SEC tournament, and we lose the first game in the tournament. Remember that? Yeah. And then we get all the way to the championship game, and – in the championship game, we have a guy named Ryan Bird starting. Yep. And Ryan had, like, very few innings on the year. Simple as that. Yeah. And that's all the pitching we had left, though. Right. Like, we – because if you lose in the tournament, like, it's a long – it is tough to yeah. get to the championship game, right? We lost – ends up getting there, especially the way – In the had, double elimination. Especially the way they had a yeah, format in yeah, there, Yeah, right? exactly, yeah. So – 
we get to that game and end up winning that game. And I think it was pretty convincing too. Like, I don't really think it was. Oh, we, I think we beat them like 11-4 yeah, or something. Yeah, I don't really something. think it was yeah, that it close was of like, a game. Yeah. But I think that was the next spot where it was kind of like, well, it don't matter who's in the lineup, who's on the mound. Like, we can be drumming anybody you put out here. It I don't re- matter. I remember the, the ex- that exact feeling. That's funny that you say that because we've never had this conversation. But I remember doing the charts and just like being like, holy shit, we're good. Like, if – and I love Ryan Bird. He, and he was an integral part, pitched some yeah, huge bro. games. So nothing against him. But I was like, if Ryan Bird's starting and we're dominating this Vanderbilt team who was top 10 in the country, and then Nolan Kane's coming in and sh- – like, we were just we were just dominating with, you know, guys that weren't our frontline guys. I was like, I'm convinced. There was, knew it. there was three or four times that year where Ryan had to throw in, like, must spots. Like, we needed him to throw. That was, I think, that was the first time, like on the weekend in an SEC spot that year, yeah. that we needed him to throw, and we like, we didn't have anything else left, so it was like, hey Ryan, here's the ball. We legit need like six out of you, yeah, not six outs, no. We, we, we need, need like you. six innings out of you. Go get him, like straight up, yeah. like we don't have anything else left. Yep. You have to go and do it, and then he goes out there and just does it, yeah. And we're just like, yo, it, 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 pick the names out of yep. a hat, like exactly. we in here today, like yep. y'all can't beat us. And that's kind of where I think that was the second part of the year where it was just like, bro, if we we're don't good. win this, what, what, what yeah. you, what's wrong? It's a disappointment. Yeah. yeah, like what's well, going on? I tell people all the time too. I think one of the things that made it a championship team too was I genuinely felt this. I know you guys felt this too. Was like when we were down in a game, especially late, it was like literally never a panic. It was like, ooh, this is fun. Who's gonna be get the game winner but today? That, like, that feeling started the year before we went on that show. Oh yes, yes. And it kind of yes. like it just carried over to the next year, but it was legit. We get we went on that crazy streak and it was, it, it didn't matter, yeah. What the score or the situation was, we could be down seven to two in the six, and everybody was just like, "All right, when is it gonna happen?" <laughs> yeah. And then there'd be a leadoff walk and be like, "Here we go, here it this is, is. This now is we it. go." And, and we, we would be cocky th- in the dugout too, oh, screaming, dude, be like, be, "Hey, this is how it starts." We here put we up go. three that inning. The next run, we we put up two more. Next thing you know, it's a four spot in the eighth, and you're like, "Yo, yep. what just happened?" Yep. <laughs> but that's how it was. So yep. yeah, that was like that was a. It was a there was a lot of 08 that yep. had to happen for yes. 09 to go the way it did. Yep. Right? And if you think for me like if I switch it back to this squad right here, look I know there's a a bunch of new faces, guys that transferred in here and there or whatever you want to call it, but they've had a lot go on. Like we didn't back then we didn't struggle with a ton of guys getting injured. They've had their own adversities like on this squad to make them mature a lot quicker a lot faster. Yeah. We didn't have that. We, we had a lot of the same guys just kind of out there just doing it. Like, yeah. I want to say, but the, the arm that we did lose that year, which is crazy to me that to think that that's the arm we lost, but we lost Chris Matulas that year, who could have right. yeah, easily right. been, yeah. at that point in the year, he was kind of like starting the midweek games, but I would imagine he would have progressed to the back end of the year where he would have been pitching some on the weekend as well. Oh, yeah, if absolutely. not in a starting role, like out of the pin, like first guy out of the pin. Oh, or absolutely. So like, other than that, we didn't deal with a ton of injuries. Yeah. They've done they've dealt with a lot of stuff this year that makes those guys kind of mature in a lot quicker pace. So I do think that there is a path to them getting done what they need to get done this year. And it's I mean, yeah, I'd be interested to see it, man. I think so too. And like I mean, when those bright lights come on, Alex box is packed, you know what I'm saying? Like you you get a different type of competitor. So you're gonna see the true guys come out. I think that this team has enough leadership too, like you said, to be able to instill the things of the past yeah. into these guys. I think one of the biggest things for us and for me too was like going to Omaha that year before and just getting that out of the way. So like I'm a little the nervous fear. if they get there, yeah, you know the what fear. I'm saying? Like that mm-hmm. like excitement. But because yeah. when we went the second year, it was like this is business. Uh, I felt like it felt like we were at home. Yeah. I felt like this is we like, did this shit already. Yeah, bro. This is what you mean. Yeah. I mean, who cares? Yeah. Like we're here to win. <laughs> yeah. Like autographs, I, Michael Jordan. It, it doesn't matter. Bro, bro, come on. Oh man. All right, we gotta tell this story. Oh man. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh my God. All right. So in Omaha, our fr- my freshman year, you know, we go there and we're you know, enamored, it's amazing. and But they have all these schedules, right? Like the LSU team, meet the LSU team, and like people can come and they're signing autographs. You know, we sit in an assembly line and everybody comes with their little poster and we sign in and hey, thanks, you know, good luck. And the next person, right? So my our freshman year, we kill it, everybody's nice. My sophomore year, we were like, man, fuck this shit. We just want to go to practice. We want to get to the game. So we were being not, we were dicks, you know, like we were just being kids, arrogant. And when, whenever there was like somebody that had three posters, you know, cause they were taking advantage of it or whatever. They just wanted one for their family, their friends, all this Please. stuff. 
It was for people taking advantage yes. of it. It wasn't literally we for the kid with correct. one thing or the... It was literally for the people that were taking advantage of it. Right. And that's important to say because we would... If there was a kid in front of us, we're signing it, talking to them, right? But it would be like, whose is this? Like, we'd be like, Who's, whose is this? And nobody would answer. So Michael Jordan, Peyton Manning, <laughs> Mike Concho, <laughs> like random ass names, you know, like some stupid shit. So sure enough, the next morning we get on the bus, <laughs> Coach Maneri goes... All right, boys, sit down. I need to have a conversation with you guys. And he comes out mad as fuck. I need to read you an email that I just got sent to me. <laughs> He's like, dear Coach Maneri, you know, I just wanted to take the time to say thank you for, you know, your team coming out to the sign autographs, blah, blah, blah. However, I will say that my son and his friends were horribly disappointed to know that Michael Jordan, Peyton Manning, and like some other name were all in attendance and they didn't get to meet them. They saw their names autographed on the sheets of paper, but they didn't get to meet Michael Jordan. Could you please explain to me how Michael Jordan got to the big? He was so butthurt about this shit. It was fucking hilarious. We're all sitting there like, who did that shit? Yeah. <laughs> like laughing, but yeah. we're like... He was but, so But we all kind of knew because it was like when it was going on, it was literally – so like he's explaining the way it really went was it was the entire team was like sitting at a table or extended tables in a line and they would start the line and it was just people literally down the line. So like if you got one thing, you signed it, pass it on to the next guy. And the guy – the people just kind of walked in front, you you know, talked to them, made small small conversation and that was it. Well, then there were some people that would come through this line and they would literally have four, five things. One, there's like one person, like a, a grown man and a kid. And now I got four things and the lines being held up. People are stopping. So like people started getting just unruly about it and they would sign their name right on one of them. And the following two or three was just not getting real names. And it just became a kind of a, I don't know. It was kind of funny. I ain't gonna we thought it was funny while in the moment, you know, and we can see now looking back on it, like how it might be a disappointing Yeah, it was juvenile. Yeah, yeah, it was you didn't juvenile. have to do it that way because yeah. especially if you're signing, like just sign it. Yeah, just but do. that was, it happened. <laughs> what are you going to do? Kids. That was it. We were, fun. we were having fun. We were in the, in the moment, but I thought that was funny. I just, I remember Co Coach Moneri just being like, I can't believe you guys. He was so disappointed. I don't know if you he remember was. him reading the no, email. Was. Like I was just like, I, I remember my stomach hurting because I wanted to be like, wow, who, did that? who did that? Who did that? I was like, I know I signed Michael Jordan a bunch. Like <laughs> I definitely did. Uh, that was funny. Um, <laughs> what other story? You remember any other good stories from Omaha or leading up to the college world series? Oh, um, trying to think of any like good. Uh... I'm thinking about, we had that. I won't say any names. But we did while we were there. This so that's the difference too. The, the difference in the tournament. You remember how it, I'm pretty sure it's somewhat similar now. But obviously, different teams are placed at different hotels, right? Yeah, yeah. The 08 time we went, we were literally like 30 <laughs> minutes away from the stadium yeah. and everything going on. That was basically this team wasn't supposed to be here. Let's <laughs> yeah. give it. Let's give it. Nine when before. we went, we were in the thick of it, yeah. right? They penciled us in early. So at that point <laughs> in the year, like you're saying, like boys have gotten pretty cocky. Ah, uh, cocky. Boy, confident. Like, confident. To where, That's like, it. there was nothing, like, we good. I don't really care what we do. Like, we got, we good. We'll figure it out on the field. Yeah, right? and we're going to be fine on the field. We'll yeah. be fine on the field. Just yeah. get us to the park. At the time we're supposed to be there, we'll figure it out, right? Yep. So, at that point, like, we, we're playing games. We got days off. We're, boys got curfew. We're, we're residents in Omaha. I mean, you would swear we were regulars there. Like, we were out everywhere. 12 o'clock curfew, coach, we just got practice at 10. Man, yeah. I'm not coming back at 12. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. We had some guys that were 21, they're going uh, to casino. Some guys that were old enough that would go to casino. It was, you, you, if you didn't know, if you saw us around there, you would swear our season was done and we were there just visiting. <laughs> yeah. like, it was fun. Every, we're talking to other dudes, like we get on base, second base, be like, hey man, like what are y'all doing? It was like, man, we've been, we had us a good night. Y'all try out this place, the boys would be like, nah, dude, we were in bed at 12. <laughs> Because we had curfew at 10 and we had film study from 8 to 10. And we were like, yeah. film study? Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, damn, we were at breakfast. We're at we were at lunch this morning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had a beer for lunch. Oh, <laughs> man. We were, yeah, it, was the, it was the loosest bunch of dudes you kind of ever saw. It was, there really was no moment that felt like it was too big. There was a bunch of dudes that just, I mean, it's like banded together. And obviously, like a lot of people don't know that, but at this point now, but it's, as close knit of a group I've ever seen, man. Like there's 15 of us that still talk regularly every day, yeah. pretty much every day. And it's like that same feel of what we had from then to be able to carry it 
you know, 15 years yeah. later tells you a lot about how it was when we were all together every yeah. day. So that part of it was, you know, pretty cool for me. hundred percent. I, I tell people too, like that, I think the perfect example, I've told this story on my podcast, coach and I have talked about it, but after we lost game two in the championship series, when he huddled us up and he just got us ready, like, you know what I'm saying? Like he said the right things. And then we got on the bus and the music was loud. Like it was like, we had won a game, you know, yeah. he was like, I want it to be like, we had just won a game, like, you know, like all this stuff. And so I feel like to lose a game that you thought you were going to, you know, win to have the national championship, it could have been a really downer bus yeah. ride. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For us to be partying and being like, and then from we got, the moment we stepped on. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then we get back to the hotel and we had our little team meeting and doing all our shit, you know, like as a group, it was just like, there's no way we're losing this game tomorrow. No. You know? No. So it was just like, I think that was the perfect epitome of like our team yeah. lose like the, the chance to win a national championship and then be pumped on the bus ride to be like, Nah, it's all right. Tomorrow yeah. we got it. Tomorrow it was. It was. It was a good group, man. I, I'll. I'll never forget too. I, I think I've told the story a time or two. I don't know where, but I. I remember earlier in the year that year, um, when ugh, earlier in the year that year. Actually, no. What am I? It's not even early in the year. It was literally what you were just talking about when Nick. So we had this whole thing. Game two, we lose. Yeah, you yeah. would think it would be like everyone just feeling like, oh no. Yeah. Because and I think the I think the reason why the thought was this, because if I remember correctly, the year before, Georgia was in the championship, won game one, and proceeded to lose game two and game three, three. Yeah. to Fresno, Fresno State. Yeah. Right? Yep. So like we win game one, but then we lose game two. And like the thought process for a lot of people was like, Hell no. Right. They got we momentum. We ain't doing what they just yeah, did. Yeah, they got year. momentum too. No like, chance we're losing yeah. this thing, right? Yeah. So, like, you know, that was a feel. So, where we played that game, lost that game, get on the bus. Coach gives a speech where I, I, I assume he thought everybody was like down in the dumps. That speech ends and everybody was, it was like a party going back to it, like it as nuts. if we won, yeah. right? So, we get in that room that night and I'll, I'll never forget this. It was the, it still gives me chills to this day. It's like we have that whole thing that we did. Is what it is. <laughs> no, not much information will ever be given from that. Ever. But one of the one of the one of the things that stuck with me more than a lot of the stuff forever is the sense that we were kind of all like as vulnerable as it could be in that situation, right? And the guys are just kind of talking to each other about stuff. And Nick, out of nowhere, out of for no reason, literally, Nick Pontiff looks at me and he was like, Hey bro, I promise you, you're going to hit a homer tomorrow. No way. Oh yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? I swear. This is dude. in the hotel room, like when we're yeah. when we're doing this, like all our this shit. This is this is meeting. literally an hour after we just got off the bus after losing game two. Holy he goes, shit. "You're going to hit a home run tomorrow." I got so chills, dog. I when I hit the homer in game three, I touched home plate, and he, I'm like, "Where's Nick? No way. Where's he at?" I'm like, "I was, dude. It was the it was the most outer body experience you could ever oh, feel." Because I, I was chills, like, "Yo, bro. like, yeah, what the fuck?" It was and so like something like that was like it was cool to me, man. That was. Bro, you never, never stuff you, like that is just like you can't duplicate stuff. No, like you have never told me that. I got ch like chills all yeah. in my whole body, bro. That's yeah. fucking nuts. Nick never told me that either. Yeah. I, th I figured he uh -huh. would have said something about that. That's dope. Do you guys talk about that or like yeah. have you guys talked yeah, about it? We have. What? We always do. That's fucking yeah. awesome. I love that. That's why it was also cool too. If you remember, like when we were up eleven four in the last inning, and I went back out and coach yeah. did that cool thing yeah. where he kind of like allowed yeah. guys yeah. to come off the field. Yeah. Well, Nick replaced me on the field too, so I gave Nick like this huge hug, and I was like, dude. I love you. No <laughs> yeah. way. I was like, dude, I love you. This is awesome. Yeah. Dude, we got to find that yeah. clip. If we can f somehow find the clip of like the end of the game, like that's sick. Yeah. That's really fucking cool. So stuff like that, it, it doesn't leave you. you. No. Like you can't write that How script. old are you, 34? Yeah. yeah. Fuck, man. We're 34 talking about that shit. Right? And it's fucking giving me chills like, like we yeah, were there dude. yesterday. Yeah. I told the story of like, um, I'll never forget this my whole life. DJ was, you know, from Michigan, Lambeau mm -hmm. Leap. He was a huge mm -hmm. Packers fan. So we're doing our lap around the field and shit. Yeah. And I was like, bro, I was like, how sick would it be to do a Lambo leap into all the fans in left field? He was like, let's do it. <laughs> so we did, we wait, we were like in the back of everybody and like we waited and I was like, you ready to do this? He was like, yeah. So we tell all the fans, we're like, well, hey, we want to jump up there, Lambo leap. We're going to sprint, climb the fence. You guys got to pull us up, right? Yeah. And so all the fans did it. So I was like, I'll never forget this the rest of my life. We waited, we go to left field, then we go sprint, like climb up the thing. They all pull us up and we were just sitting in there with everybody like, it would have, if we had phones, it would yeah. have been the best video ever. Oh, like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like to have that and shit, but we didn't have the, the technology. That wasn't, that wasn't a thing. Then. It wasn't a thing. <laughs> I had 5,000 Facebook requests when we got back. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that shit? <laughs> Think about that. Yeah. Uh, we missed out on the good times, man. Yeah. We still did our thing, though. We still good I think it was good that we didn't have social media. We, we might have been degenerates. It might yeah. have been a problem. I mean, we're already signing Michael Jordan. So. <laughs> 
Yeah, we would have been too distracted with DMs <laughs> and shit like that. Oh, oh man, but funny. nah, like that stuff like that was cool, man. Yeah. And when I once again, like when I talk about like a team that was like nothing bothered us and like we were just we were in the moment every yeah, we went. Like was, I can I still remember one of the first practices we I think it was the very first practice we had when we were there because it was on the field in Omaha mm-hmm. and it was we're warming up like before we even take BP and it's almost a straight up fist fight between Leon and Chad. Yeah. And the fist fight is over or the fist fight that's about to start. Right is over whose dad would beat the other dad up. That's what the fight was. That's what it was Literally, about. No, my like, daddy will be. That, like, that's what it was about. It wasn't like, that's what's going on before we're about to take BP on the field in Omaha as a team. Yes. And our little, so like, and people don't know this, like you get, when we went to practice at all these other spots, it was kind of like open. Like, hey, 10 o'clock, you pretty much got whatever, however much time. Right. When we were practicing on the field, you had a strict time slot. Like so it was like, you know, it like was kind small. of a real business thing. Like yeah. you're in there, you throw your, your, everything scheduled. And in, in our scheduled time, we were about to fight over whose dad was, who's going to be whose dad. Yeah. Mean, it was and then those motherfuckers are doing home run derby. Home run derby. No BP, <laughs> home run derby. <laughs> like biggest games of the year I'm coming up. I'm show, like, bro. I'm like, dude, Chad is taking some G hacks right now. Like, what is he I'm doing? Show, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's just trying to hit lasers out of the stadium. So, like, yeah, it was hilarious. Man, it was, yeah. it was as loose of a group as you can ever find. Yep. And I'm I'm hoping in their own way that the 2023 team is, you know, finding a way to do the same thing. Yeah. Because this is the time that matters. This is the stuff that, that you remember. Like, nobody remembers – nobody remembers the Ole Miss series at home, man. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. No. Right? I knew we won it. Like, yeah. Just because I know – just because I know the series that, that we yeah, lost. Yeah, we know the history. I, yeah. I, so I know that, but I don't – I couldn't tell you pretty much anything that yeah. happened in that series. Yeah. But you remember – things that happen throughout the postseason and stuff like that. So this is the time that, that makes yep. that you do all this stuff for, and it's, it's pretty cool. I hope they do. I think uh, I heard uh, – I read this article the other day that Skeens wears a different player. I have heard about that. Yeah, I just read it. So he every one of his start days, he wears a different, like, caricature or, like, funny T-shirt of a random player. And, it's like, they don't know who it is that day, but he's, like, it's Skeens day, and he comes in, it'll just be, like, a funny T-shirt. Yeah. But little shit like that when leaders are, like, doing goofy shit, like – I don't think Dylan's like that crazy personality, but I think his leadership and the way he carries himself yeah. is is good enough, you know. But if they have those people keeping it light, I have heard he's I have heard he's a lot looser. Like once you're around him, and you get to know him. So I would imagine in that clubhouse, that's what, you get a real loose dude, I bet. which I that's why like everyone that. loves him. Yeah, so it is what it is. I kind of like that. I heard that yeah. about Skeens too. I would I literally ask. I'm like, what kind of dudes? He's like, dude, he's he's hilarious. Like he's goof. I'm yeah. like, when he sat here, he was so military and mm-hmm. just very like, yes. Uh-huh. Same thing yeah. when we talked. Yeah, about exactly. Him, but, I'm yeah. like, good for you. I like that. Good. 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 Yeah. So, yeah, man. I, they play Friday afternoon, correct? Mm-hmm. I guess Saturday. Tulane, yeah. which honestly should be rocking and it's going to be hot as hell. Yeah. Tuesday afternoon, when that game, you play the Saturday night game, right? So, you would imagine that if you go out and take care of what you need to do on Friday afternoon, it'll set you up. I would imagine that Skeens will be throwing the Saturday night game. Yeah. Right, which then take care of what you need to do. It propels you into the championship game where you would have to be beat twice to not make it out of the region. Yep. I think now look, every regional's got his own test. It's got a, somebody's gonna be hot. Teams are coming and playing well. I personally think that this is a great regional for them to have. I think it is a great tune up situation where they're gonna play teams that are quality, but if they take care of their business and do what they need to do. They should come out on top and out of this regional. Yeah. But, you know, it's baseball. Crazier things have happened. I'm just hoping that crazier things don't happen this weekend. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. I'm with you. I'm with you. I know. I was like, I always get kind of nervous with a four seed like Tulane being hot right now. But I, I do think that they take care of business. And I think Skeens gets the ball Saturday. And I think that would be fun. Saturday night at the box is fun. Dude, I, I want to – how crazy too – did this throw you off at all when we were the away team at, at the box? It was being trippy. the away team threw me off less than actually being in the away dugout. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that what was, I think was That more, was yeah. just odd. Because yeah, just... there was no, man, let me just go inside, get a breather. Yeah, no. It was literally like, nah, I'm stuck yeah, here. I'm stuck. Like, this, yeah, is, this is it. This is, it, this is what right? we got. Yeah. Like, we, we're at the crib, but I can't yeah, go nowhere. Exactly. Like, I'm right that was, here. That was always the yeah, trippiest yeah, thing. Yeah. And then you want to hear something crazy. I never, fun fact, I never pitched a CG in college. Actually, never in my career. Mm-hmm. I never pitched nine innings ever in my career, except for that regional when we were the away team. So I didn't even get a CG out of it. We played ten, 
I didn't, uh, I didn't pitch I didn't 10. Know that. Yep. So never pitched a CG in college. I only pitched nine <laughs> innings one time. That was it. Wait, give me the line in that game because the line was incredible. Oh, it was stupid. Yeah, it was it was nine innings. I can't remember. I had one run because it was two one. We wound up winning two one. Uh-huh. Um, I had fourteen punches. I think. That's <laughs> yeah. goofy. Fourteen. Yeah. Fourteen punches against Baylor. That was fun. Yeah. That was. I struck. I don't know if you remember. I struck out the uh the side in the ninth. The bottom. Uh-huh. So it was the bottom of the ninth. It was one one. Mm-hmm. They hit a home run. They win. Yeah. You know, like that was the craziest shit yeah. for me. I've never. As a like starter, right, pitching the bottom of the yeah, ninth, yeah. Right so I fucking strike the first two batters out on two pitches. I get the next, like it was almost an immaculate inning. Mm-hmm. Like strike out, strike out on three pitches. Next batter, I go o two, and I throw this fucking nice breaking ball, and he just fouls it off. And I was like, oh, almost had the Im- immaculate <laughs> inning. And I get the ball back, and the whole place just went crazy. Like stood up, and I remember stepping off the mound and being like. This is fucking amazing. Like literally yeah. just being like, this is fucking unreal. Yeah. And I got in there, I knew exactly I threw yeah. a curveball under him and like you struck out and like went that was the, my the best place, celebration. Yeah. That place is so this year, the Friday night game when they played Tennessee this year, mm. and Jordan Thompson hit the bottom of the eighth base yep. clear and double. Yep. But the entire game though, like that's the first time in a very, very long time where I was in that stadium and I'm like, it's giving me goosebumps because this yeah. is what it felt like when we were here. This I'm so is what mad it felt I wasn't like here for that weekend. Oh, it was unbelievable. And I've been to a number man. of games since then, and yeah. it just it didn't it didn't feel the same. I would imagine that's fun. If not Friday night, hopefully Friday. I mean, if not Friday afternoon, hopefully though that Saturday night you're yeah. going to get like that same feeling. Yeah, Saturday night at the box, man. That's gonna be fun. Yeah. All right, you going out for any games this weekend? You gonna be there? I'm gonna try to make it to the Saturday night game. Nice. I can see the way my. Um, the way the way my pigment set up, t- Friday's gonna be tough. <laughs> <laughs> You're so dumb. You know, Friday's gonna be tough. So, you know, what you mean? You gonna be a nice bucket hat on yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. But so, you know, you'll be fine. It'll be nice and lathered up. You know, really don't really don't know about all that. I'm gonna try to get the Saturday game and see, you know, a little extra enough for Saturday. Yeah, that's good. Try to get in there for that one. Right, good. That's why. Yeah, I don't want to miss skiing Saturday night at the box. I want to see it, baby. I want to see. It'll it. be fun. I want to see it when the lights are on. The sun's sun's low. That's it. Be good. Time. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate you making some time. This was fun to catch up and shoot the shit a little bit about the Tigers and reminisce about the past. But I'll let you get out of here, get back to life and work. Something like that. All that stuff. Yeah, all, all that, that good shit stuff. that we're supposed mm-hmm. to do. Whatever. <laughs> thank you, man. I appreciate you. For sure.